a great God. Such a great God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I give honor to God today who is the head of my life. Without him, I would not be. I give honor to our fine pastor, my husband, Dr. Spencer Tracy Ellis, who without him, I don't know about you, but some of us would not be walking in our calling, would not be where God has desired for us to be had he not stepped out and did what God called him to do. Man, I honor my children, David and Avery, for allowing me to be their mom and allowing me to serve the people of God. I won't be before you long. If you could get with me Romans, Romans chapter number eight. Romans chapter number eight. If you have it, just say amen. I'll do it a little different. We're just going to have a word of prayer. Most holy, righteous Father, Lord, we just love you. We love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our soul. Right now, oh God, I decrease as you increase, Lord. Use your vessel, oh God. If you give it to me to say, I'll say it, oh God. Let somebody be delivered by this word. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And the word reads in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who even at who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessions for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep. For the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thus the reading of the word. Amen. We're just going to use a simple subject for today. More than conquerors. More than conquerors. Look at the person next to you, beside you, in front of you, and just tell them, I am more than a conqueror. More than conquerors more than conquerors. First, I want to just make sure that as we talking about we more than something, that you know what a conqueror is, okay? Conqueror means to overcome or to surmount, to be above all. And the word of God says that you are 
more than a conqueror. So you're more than above all. You are more than a conqueror. And we're conquerors because in God's word, he said a couple of things. He said, and we know. Now, he leads off this statement saying, we and we know. So you know what that means? He's saying, trust it. Trust it. We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Trust it. This means all circumstances, all problems, all blessings, everything that comes our way is a demonstration of God's love for us. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, God works all things together for good for you. Now, he has a purpose for you. First thing you need to know, he has a purpose for you. All things, afflictions, trials, tribulations, persecution, everything that we are exposed to work together in concert. They work corporately together. They mutually agree, the good and the bad. All things, trusted, all things work together for the good. He has purpose for you, and guess what? The word said he foreknew. He said for whom he did foreknow. Guess what foreknow means? God has knowledge of it all. Uh, The entire course of events that are going to take place for the future, God already knows. The word says, not first lady, the word says he for whom he did for no. He already knew. And then guess what? He had a plan. He had a plan. And inside his plan, whoever you are, he called you, he justified you, and he glorified you. Okay? But God, who is rich in mercy, where is his great love, He loved us enough. Even when we was dropped dead in our sins, his love raised us up together. Now look, the word says all whom he did predestinate, okay? Predestined, pre, that means the before, okay? He predestinated you to become a Christian, all right? And he called you not merely with just an external invitation. He didn't just do that, all right? He called you in such a way that you are justified, all right? You are justified. And look, it's a, pretty much this word, it's a sequence of events that takes place here. Predestination precedes and secures your call, all right? Because he thought about it. He already knew it. And it secures your calling. And guess what? Your calling precedes and secures the justification. One is connected in purpose with the other one. I said he had a plan for you. Everything he did, he planned it. He already knew. All right? They all work together now. Not only does he work all things out together for the good for his children through his plan and through his purpose, but he also addresses your personal weaknesses. Some of us got weaknesses, all right? He addresses them in your word. Some of us have fear. Some of us feel inadequate. Some of us have guilt. We have hopelessness. We have insecurity. But guess what? God addresses that in his word. First thing he addresses is fear. Who can be against us? Verse 31 says, what shall we say then to these things? For if God be for us, who can be against us? Not persecution, not danger, not swore. You are more than a conqueror, more than an overcomer. If God is with you, you got to be courageous. You got to be confident. You can't be fearful. Stop asking yourself, how can I handle this? How, how can I handle all this that life is throwing at me? How can I deal with it? How can I, Tracy, have four jobs, 
two children, a husband. How can I? Because God already foreknew it before I knew it. Okay? Back when I was 16 working for my dad, my dad sat me and my brother down and said, you will work two jobs. Summer vacation wasn't going out hanging. We was working. So guess what? God already foreknew it. He already knew it. And if God is with you, guess what? The stuff that you got going on in your life, the difficulties you got, let me let you in on a secret. God ain't phased. Your problems, the stuff that you have going on, he's not phased at all. God is greater than anything that life can throw at you. God said, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And listen to this. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those, look, look, look what the word says. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. You hear me? My daddy used to tell me, he used to say, Tracy, don't worry about them folks bothering you. You worry for them, because they don't know who they messing with. You are more than a conqueror. The word says those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish, okay? The situation, the person, it's nothing. It's nothing because you're more than a conqueror. The other thing, uh, another weakness that he addresses is inadequacies. Inadequacies. In, in verse 32, he talks about inadequacies. Who can really deprive us? Who can really deprive us? You think you don't have what it takes. But look, I'm going to read this. It says, he that spared not. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us. Therefore, he will graciously give you all things. He will do it. God has invested love in you. He won't just walk away from you and forget you. He ain't that kind of God. God already gave the greatest gift. He gave the greatest gift. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I got to move on. The, the next fear, he ad the next weakness that he addresses is guilt. A lot of times we feel guilty. A lot of times we feel guilty about things in our past, things even in our, in our present day. But who is going to bring a charge against God's elect? Who shall accuse you or condemn you when God justified you? You know what that means? Our, our sins might cause us to feel guilty. But you know what? Jesus paid it all. That's real. That's one, and, and one thing you need to know. Once God has accepted you, for who and what you are, and he loves you anyway, nobody else's opinion matters. And guess what? Can't nobody sway God about how he feels about you. Can't nobody change God's mind about how he feels about you. You are more than a conqueror. People might criticize you, condemn you, gossip about you, cheat you, nitpick you, berate you, belittle you, accuse you, but guess what? Who cares? Can't nobody change God's opinion about you. You are more than a conqueror. You were predestined. You were predestined. Second Corinthians says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Nobody can condemn you. Now, when you talk another, one of our weaknesses is we get hopeless. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. We get hopeless. But God gave you hope. 
and confidence in the future through this word. Because the word said he already foreknew. He called you. He justified you. He already knew. And now in verse 34, there are about four arguments that God gives you about your security. In this one verse, it says, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Let me show you the four arguments. The fact of the matter is Christ died to save us, not to destroy us. First argument, Christ died to save us, not to destroy us, and not to condemn us, okay? We are secure. Second argument is that he rose again, <laughs> all right? He rose again for our justification. Now, guess what? It's so awesome. He's at the right hand of God making intercession for you. You know what that means? He has dignity, authority, and power in heaven. And what he doing? He up there interceding and pleading the cause for you. He is up there aiding and abetting you up in heaven. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Last one, the last one, the last personal weakness is insecurities. We have insecurities, okay? We, now, the scripture says, who shall separate us from God's love? Mm. Trouble, depths, heights, situations that will come, sometimes make us think that we have lost the love of God. Sometimes we go through stuff and we say, God, he, possibly, he can't possibly love me. But God's love is eternal, y'all. It's unconditional. It's unconditional. And, and really, when they say this statement, who can separate us from God's love? This is really an ambiguous statement because it could mean either our love for God or God's love for us. But guess what? Let's look at it in the love we have for God. The love we have for God is so strong that nothing, nothing can destroy the love we have for our God. Our God that gave us life, nothing can surmount that. Nothing can oppose that. No trial, no tribulation, no depth, no height, none of that. Because guess what? Your answer lies in verse 37, where it says, nay, in all things, in all things, we are more than a conqueror through him that love us. Now, I'm looking at you, and some of you don't seem too convinced of your conqueror status, okay? It seemed like you might not get it. So I would do you a disservice if I just left it here. I got to tell y'all about another category of people. Now, for the record, let the record show. We are more than conquerors. The record is shown, right? All right. So now, I got to let you know. Got to let you know. God has given you the power to conquer things. You don't need to fear life or death, things present nor things to come, because Jesus Christ loves you, and he's giving you the victory. And when you leave here today, you got to know that you're more than a conqueror. But I'll say this. In my opinion, this is not the gospel according to nobody except Tracy. One of the greatest hindrances of church growth, in my opinion, it's not problems with money or staffing or even a direct opposition from sinners. The greatest hindrance has always been this group that you call cowards. Cowards. These are the folk that lack faith, that's always complaining, that's always murmuring, 
that's always sowing discord, that's always dragging their feet, not really handling God's business the way it's supposed to be handled. So I'm going to help you. I want you to know the difference in a coward and a conqueror, okay? And the difference is not what they see with the physical eye. It's not in what they see. It's in how you react and respond to what they see. Now, for the record, a coward in Webster Dictionary is one who shows fear in the face of pain and danger, period. Now, I think I told you that a conqueror overcomes, is above all measure, is going to surmount, has permanent victory. That's a conqueror. So you got the, I didn't define it for you. Now, cowards follow the path of least resistance. They take the easy route out. Now, you just quietly ask yourself as I'm giving you these demonstrations, am I a coward? Mm. Conquerors see resistance as an opportunity for God to show out for God to manifest his power, okay? All right? Now, cowards listen to the voice of the majority. Conquerors listen to the voice of God. How many times have you been in, at a meeting or somewhere and they're taking a vote and they ask to see a show of hands and it's always people looking around to see who they voting for, what they doing? Y'all need to be the one that's standing by yourself. Stand alone. Stand on the side of faith and trust God, even if you stand alone. You are more than a conqueror. I told him yesterday, I'd rather be radical and lonely and full of faith and trust in my God and stand by myself and be more than a conqueror than to be a coward. Okay? Cowards are fueled by fear. Conquerors are fueled by faith. Yes, 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 we get scared of fights to some degree. But we look, and we look at confrontation with some apprehension. But why be afraid of somebody with a, a what you call them, a BB gun, when guess what? You got a nuclear bomb, baby. You possess far more. You possess far more than they do. You got a bomb. Matthew 10 and 28 says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy the body, and the, the, both the soul and the body in hell. Cowards depend on their own work. Conquerors depend on the revealed word of God. They de conquerors depend on the omniscience of God to perform what he said he was going to do. Cowards see negatives as something greater than God. Cowards are crybabies. Cowards always looking back, uh, whining about what was in the past, what they used to be, what they used to do. Conquerors are looking to the future for new ground to possess, new things to get in the name of Jesus. I just wanted you to give you something to think about when you think about a coward and a conqueror. The, the subject of this message is that we are more than conquerors, but you can summarize it in four words. God is for us. God is for us no matter who you are, Regardless of what you have done, in spite of where you are with your walk with him, you got to know that God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, Lion of Judah, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ with us, he is on your side. You're not on the battlefield alone. You have an omniscient God on your side. This means all powerful. His power is your strength. His authority is is your command. At, the, at his name, Jesus, you can cast out demons. You can speak in tongues. You can pick up serpents. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. God is with you. You got his power. To say that God is for us is to declare that he have called you. You are chosen. 
God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. You were handpicked out of trillions. You were selected and elected for the universe of infitude. You, your existence has more meaning than you realize. God has picked you. God has plans for you. He didn't bring you through the fire. He didn't bring you through the flood. He didn't bring you through hell just for a menial existence. God didn't lead you through the valley. God didn't take you over mountains for you to abide in insignificance. God has a plan for you. See, the world, what happens is the world sees you as some corporation's human resource person or some number in a personnel database. But guess what? The world is trying to reduce your humanity to just punching a keyboard, filing paper. The world just thinks you're supposed to answer phones. That's all you're supposed to do is crunch some numbers. But guess what? God has a plan to improve your quality of life. You got a calling on your life. There are some, and there will be some, who want to remind you of who you used to be, where you came from. It's still going to be a group of folks questioning your qualifications and reminding you of what you used to do. Always a doubting Thomas, questioning your capabilities, questioning your true intentions. Is she really anointed? Can she really do it? Is he really qualified? Oh, you ain't smart enough. You ain't never gonna lose no weight. You ain't been here long enough to be respected. Oh, no, 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 no. There are those who still want us to ride on the back of the bus. They want us to use separate washrooms and say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. They want to call our men boys. But guess what? God has a plan for us. God is for us. In spite of their opposition, God has designed our lives where we still do not think. You got a calling on your life. You have a role to play in salvation's history. You are valuable to God's strategy. You are critical to God's plan. Like our ancestors before us, we are links in an eternal chain that's winding up time. We CEOs, we MDs, we PhDs, we CPAs, we telemarketers, grocery clerks. But guess what? God has given us a unique talent that only we can master. And as we master it, we magnify our God in it. You got to discover your own gifts. You got to tap into it. You got to maximize what God has given you. You got potential, and your potential is for his glory. Find out what you do best and do it for the glory of God. That's your calling. You like, I don't know where I've been called. Glorify God. Not only has he called you, he predestined your life. You got a destiny. God is taking your life to a specific place in time, okay? You might have been shaped in iniquity. You might be a sinner, but guess what? Your future place is in glory. Regardless of the decisions you made, you still gonna arrive at your appointed destination at your appointed time. God knows your frailties, baby. He has the keys to your closet of bones. Yes, there is destiny on your life. The fact of the matter is, You've been predestinated. You were shaped and molded before you was even conceived in your mama's womb. God knew the turns you would make. God knew the foolish decisions you would make. God knew the wrong choices you would make. God knew who you were before you were conceived. So when the unexpected occurs in your life, guess what? We know it's still part of the plan. That's why Joseph could persevere when his brother sold him off to slavery and when he was unjustly prisoned. What they meant for evil, God meant for good. I'm here to tell you, you're more than conquerors. It's part of God's plan. Even when it seems like 
God himself is working against your desires, your dreams. It seems like God ain't on your side. He is still working for you. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's going to make you the best. You are more than a conqueror. He is, he is training you for your final destination so that when you arrive at your final level in glory, you will be able to stay there and not fall. Finally, to say that God is with us is to say we are justified. That what we obtain, we're going to keep it because we entitled to it. Victory is ours. What God has for you is only for you. Conquerors have what they are entitled to. To conquer something or someone is to gain it, to acquire it by force. Every obstacle that will attempt to keep you from getting to your destiny and keeping and get you to not get what God has, guess what? It's been defeated. A conqueror. And I'm done. A conqueror is to be a ruler, an heir upon the throne. When you rule something, that means you got a right to it. It's your inheritance. We talk about fighting for what we got to have. You ain't got to fight. All you got to do is rule it, baby. You are more than a conqueror, and God is for you. God bless you.